Good morning. <clears throat> a lot of you people who follow me on Instagram have, have been asking how I take my dog's photo or any photos and how I edit them. And I want to show you today. So, first thing to take any dog's photo, you need to get them tired. Get ready, and we're gonna go take this dog for a run. We're gonna go try to run some couple miles, like two to three. It's kind of cold today. Probably that'll get her tired enough and then, uh, you know, we'll just go around this area, find some good spots and take some photos. And I'll come back, uh, get to our desk and uh, show you how to edit them. There was a better spot right there, but there was another husky, and uh, he seemed to not like winter around there. Okay. Apparently, coronavirus is not keeping anybody, anybody inside. Not even me. So the reason, uh, whenever you're doing pet photography, and uh, by no means I'm an expert in pet training or photography but what I'm trying to do is just go off of by my experience with with my dog here uh, you want to get them tired getting them tired kind of keeps them more in control as in you could ask them what to do and they would want to listen to you now that we're here bring dog treats very important come here sit there you go Anyways, now that I have her attention, we can start taking photos. Sit. There you go. Stay. Stay. So this has been fun. Like I said, when you're shooting a dog, it's, it's, if your dog is really trained, kudos to you. But if not, you want them tired, you want really good treats, and most of all, just teach them how to sit and stay. That's all. So, we got a bunch of photos. I'm gonna go back home now. We're gonna drive back and uh, gonna put them on the computer, run through like Lightroom, just a little bit of Photoshop, maybe, maybe not, and uh, see, uh, see how they look. Oh, there's a fire here. Not good. Yeah, California forest fires, huh? All right, see ya, see ya back home. And we're back home. So I've already got the images on my laptop now. Um, just gonna browse them through and we're gonna pull it into Lightroom. All right, let's jump right in. Okay, so I have the image pulled up. This, this is the Lightroom CC. It's the Creative Cloud version. It, it is the same as on the laptop as on the phone. So what I usually do, um, you could do that too. Mostly I work on my laptop to create a preset and then I continue using the preset for the same photos on my phone. So I would just take the memory card, import all the photos on the laptop and then go back to my phone, edit them, post them on Instagram right away. So let's, let's get started. Um, your first job as a photographer should be try to get a, get the best photo as you can. I mean, that'll just save you a, a lifetime of just editing. So in, in this case, um, I see the white balance is good, the lighting's good. Um, what I want to do is maybe bring up the shadows just a little to see. Yeah, there you go. Um, you see a little pop on the eyes over there. And I don't have to necessarily do anything with the highlights because um, there aren't any. And 
the exposures okay don't have to go too crazy over there i might want to bring down blacks a little more so the image is a little more punchy and uh, <clears throat> now this point curve is where you can actually give that faded look that you see very common in a lot of uh, instagram photos a lot of photo photographers do that a lot where where they kind of add a little faded look to the photo it's not it's not too contrasty but at the same time it is so let's go over how i do do that so you want to pick up the lower end of this uh, uh, curve and just bring it up a notch and then if you left click right here it'll add another point all you want to do is just bring that down a little now you you probably see how the image is getting darker but not more darker than you want and this is where you can start giving that faded look. So if you bring it all the way down, it'll lose it. If you bring it a little up, you'll get that back again. Now, at the same time, now you're losing a little bit of light. So you might wanna go back, pump up the shadows a little more, maybe add a little bit of exposure, and there you go. This is pretty much what I do, and I want to keep the white balance as it is, and then I want to come down to the colors because this is where the magic happens. You, what, what I what I tend to do is try to keep two colors usually complement complementary, and um, go with those. So I see that the water is a little teal, and I, I kind of want to bring that up. Um, so I'm going to go to the blues, bring them down to the teal side a little more, and you could already see that it's lightening up a lot more. So. In, in this area, what this is commonly known as the, it is known as the HSL, so hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue means the color, saturation means how vibrant that color is, luminance is just how bright it is. So, say if I take this blue and I bring down the saturation 100%, you'll see that the blue goes away from the water. Um, same thing with... Uh, Try that with any other color. We see green a lot here and yellow, so I'm gonna try bringing down the yellow. Um, and you see that the yellow goes away. And luminance again is brightness. So if I bring down the brightness, that every yellow color in the photo will turn dark. And so what you can do is it already gives you divided bands of colors that you can manipulate and get it to your liking. I mean, there's no rule behind it. All you wanna do is keep the image as natural as possible at the same time. You get creative with it. You try to pop some colors that you want and uh, take out some colors that you don't. So in this case, um, I see that a lot of blue is here. So I'm gonna try bring that down a little to the teal side and maybe brighten it up a little. Um, overall with the greens, I'm kind of not happy too much about it. So I'm gonna bring them down a little to the yellow side. Maybe let's try it to the left side now. No, I like the yellowish look there. Um, we're gonna try to desaturate them a little as well. Um, I'm gonna come back to the yellow, uh, actual yellow. I'm gonna try to take it down to the orange side. So that, that gives the sand the actual sand color. Um, darken it up a little so we can focus on the subject here. That pretty much looks really good. Now I'm gonna walk over the effects as well. Now these are pretty basic. If you do, let's leave the texture alone for a second. This is the texture. Come down to clarity and dehaze. Uh, I see a lot of photo edits that are maxed out on clarity and dehaze and uh, I can explain and I can show you how. So you see photos that are really stark. It's sort of like this. Now, they look great, look punchy, you see them, they look really attractive, and you might post them though, you know, you might go with it, it's not a problem, but you kind of lose details in the process, so instead of dialing it to 100, you might want to go with like a 20 or a 30, that way you can kind of get that nice effect at the same time, preserving the details. That looks like a well formed final result. Let's do a little before and after. That was before. This is after. Not bad. I hope you learned something out of this. And uh, stay safe. Keep washing your hands, people.